Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, what we're going to discuss is the P2Y receptors, okay, which are receptors to uh, uracil and adenine uh, nucleotides, okay? So, the P2Y receptors. So, what we're going to begin with is discussion of the ligands for P2Y receptors, okay? And then what we'll do is discuss uh, what the P2Y receptors actually are, i.e. they are G-protein coupled receptors, and we'll discuss GPCRs in some detail, we'll discuss the five different families of G-protein coupled receptors, and which of these families the P2Y receptors all fit into. Uh, then we'll discuss the heterotrimeric G-proteins and the G-protein cycle. Okay, right. So we'll start off with the different ligands for P2Y receptors. So firstly, what I should say is that there are eight different types of P2Y receptor, okay? And they all have different ligands, okay? So there are a variety of different ligands. So I think I'll start off by telling you the names of the eight different P2Y receptors, and then I'll tell you what ligands uh, they use, and then we'll have a look at the structure of these different ligands, or at least we'll have a look at the cartoon structure of these different ligands. Okay, right. So, unfortunately, their naming is not perfect, basically. There are holes in the naming system, and these are because certain receptors were identified to be P2Y receptors, and then it transpired that they weren't P2Y receptors, and then others are found in animals, but not in humans. Okay, so that results in there being gaps in the naming system. Okay, so let me list off the eight different P2Y receptors then that are found in humans. And I should just give the reference uh, where, from where I got uh, these eight different P2Y receptors. Okay, I got it from a nice review by someone called Bronstein Sitten. Okay, and I believe it's one person. Okay, so Bronstein Sitten. And uh, this was written in 2006. Okay, but I believe the information is still uh, up to date in 2015. Okay, right. So, the eight different P2Y receptors then that are in humans. There is the P2Y1, followed by the P2Y2. Okay, then there is no P2Y3, and we jump straight to P2Y4. Okay, then there is no P2Y5, and we jump straight to P2Y6. And as I say, some of these gaps, some of those gaps are because the receptor isn't found in humans, and some of them are because we named a receptor the P2, let's say, P2Y5 receptor, and then it transpired that it actually wasn't a P2Y receptor, and therefore it's gone. Okay, uh, so those are the reasons we have these holes in the naming system. Then we jump from P2Y6 all the way up to P2Y11, and then it behaves nicely after that. Okay, so we got the hang of it. So then we have P2Y12, P2Y13, and P2Y14. Okay, so those are the names of the uh, eight different P2Y receptors that we have within humans. Okay, so now let's discuss the ligands which act on these P2Y receptors. So, P2Y1 is activated by ADP, okay, so we'll start off with the structure, therefore, of ADP. So, ADP stands for adenosine diphosphate, so the A is for adenosine, then the D is for di, and then the P is for phosphate, so ADP, or adenosine diphosphate. Now, let's just draw a little cartoon for the structure of adenosine diphosphate, okay? And to be able to do this, we need to know what does adenosine actually mean, okay? So, what does this mean is the question. Basically, adenosine means adenine bound to ribose. So, let me show you a picture of this, okay? So, we'll have our ribose sugar here, which is a five-membered ring made up of four carbon atoms and then one oxygen atom with a fifth carbon coming off the side here. Okay, so this is going to represent our ribose uh, sugar. Okay, and it's a pentameric uh, ring there. Okay, so 
in blue here, this is the ribose. And now, uh, to turn ribose into adenosine, what we're going to do is attach onto it, uh, onto the first carbon here, uh, via uh, a condensation reaction. We're going to attach the organic base adenine, and I'm simply going to represent the organic base adenine as a rectangle with the letter A in the middle. Okay, so this represents the organic base adenine. So adenosine is the name for the organic base adenine uh, bound to ribose. Okay, so the combination of these two then is called adenosine. Now, more generally, adenosine is what's known as a nucleoside. Okay, uh, and what this means is it means an organic base such as adenine, or it could be one of the other organic bases, such as cytosine, um, guanine, thymine, uh, also uracil, okay? And then attached to a ribose sugar. So adenosine is an example of a nucleoside, but there are other nucleosides as well, and we'll see other nucleosides later on. Now, contrast this to another term, which is the term nucleotide. Okay, so nucleotide, uh, which is the more commonly used term than nucleoside, means a nucleoside where we have attached phosphate groups, one or more phosphate groups. Okay, so a nucleotide doesn't specify how many phosphate groups you attach on. It says at least one phosphate group needs to have been added on, basically. Okay, so let me show you how we're going to create then adenosine diphosphate, which is going to be a nucleotide now because we've got, we're going to have phosphate groups added onto it. And we're actually going to have two phosphate groups on. But you would view ADP as a nucleotide. Okay, right. So we're going to take adenosine, which is the nucleoside, and what we're going to do is attach onto the fifth carbon of the ribose sugar. Uh, we're going to attach on phosphate groups. Okay, so here I've now shown two phosphate groups attached onto uh, the fifth carbon of the ribose sugars alcohol group. Okay, so here is adenosine diphosphate then. Adenosine with two phosphate groups stuck off the side of it, and it's an example of a nucleotide. And ADP is the ligand for P2Y1. Okay, it's actually also the ligand for P2Y13 and P2Y, uh, sorry, P2Y12 and also P2Y13. Okay, so these two down here also have ADP as their ligand. Okay, so those are the ones which are activated by ADP, adenosine diphosphate, binding to them. Now we'll move on to P2Y2. Okay, so P2Y2 actually has slightly more complicated uh, ligand binding. It has two ligands that can activate it. So it can either be activated by ATP, adenosine triphosphate, or it can also be activated by UTP, which stands for uridine triphosphate. Okay, so ATP, hopefully we should easily be able to comprehend what that is. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so all you're going to do to the ADP molecule to turn it into an ATP molecule is add on a further phosphate group there to take the total number of phosphates up to three. Okay, and then what we'll have is uh, another nucleotide. So ATP is also a nucleotide. It's got three phosphate groups on rather than two though. Okay, right. UTP, let's draw out another picture for UTP. Okay, so UTP stands for uridine triphosphate. So let me write the name out first. So uridine triphosphate. Now, basically, uridine is another name for a nucleoside, basically. Uridine means the organic base uracil. Okay, which I will show as a rectangle with a U written in it, and I think we'll colour in uracil down here in red. Okay, uh, bound to uh, a ribose sugar. Okay, so it's a nucleoside, it's an organic base attached to uh, a ribose sugar. So here is the fifth carbon coming off the ribose sugar here. Okay, so in blue, this is the ribose sugar. 
And now we want to turn uridine into uridine triphosphate, also called UTP. So all we need to do to do that is add on three phosphate groups. One, two, three, like so. So let's colour those in purple here. OK, right, so that is uh, UTP now. OK, so this is the other ligand for P2Y receptors. OK, so P2Y receptors are activated by ATP and UTP. Moving on to P2Y4 receptors, OK, these are activated by just UTP, so uridine triphosphate again. So uridine triphosphate molecules bind to P2Y4 receptors and will activate them. Then moving on to P2Y6, P2Y6 is activated by uridine diphosphate, UDP. Okay, and we can again easily understand what UDP is now. All we need to do is take that final phosphate group off the uridine triphosphate, and then we've got uridine diphosphate instead. So P2Y6 is UDP activated. P2Y11 then is ATP activated, so it's activated by adenosine triphosphate again. And then finally, P2Y14 down here is activated by something called UDP glucose. Okay, and this is a uh, urid whoops, glucose. This is a uridine diphosphate molecule attached to a glucose molecule. Okay, so let's draw this out separately. So let's begin with a revision of the structure of uridine. So remember, uridine is the nuclear side that you get by joining uracil, the organic base, to a ribose sugar. Okay, so here is our ribose sugar here in blue. And then we've got our uracil organic base here in red. Okay, then we need to add two phosphate groups onto this to create uh, uridine diphosphate, UDP. Okay, so here are the two phosphate groups that we're going to add on to that fifth carbon of the ribose sugar, like so. And then finally, to turn UDP into UDP glucose, all we need to do is stick off this second phosphate group here, a glucose molecule. Now, glucose is a six-membered ring, so I'll show this here. And uh, one of the members of this ring is an oxygen, this one up here, so we'll need a sixth carbon coming off up there. Okay, so that will represent our uh, glucose, this he he hexagon with um, the sixth carbon coming off the side. Okay, so that's our glucose. So that's the structure then of UDP glucose. It's just UDP with a glucose molecule attached to the second phosphate group of the UDP molecule. Okay, right. So now we've covered the different ligands for the P2Y receptors. What we'll begin in the next video is a discussion of uh, the fact that these are all G-protein coupled receptors, and we'll discuss the different types of G-protein coupled receptors.